What's up, ladies and gentlemen? So I built a micro site with Focus recently, and after going through this whole process, I got some good feedback, and I thought, what the heck? I will share exactly my thought process as I built this site with you guys, so you can kind of see, uh, you know, the stuff I consider when I'm building a site, and the stuff I think you should consider when you build yours. All right, so let's dive in. So the, the premise of this site is I wanted to ha build just a little, uh, like a brochure for to uh, showcase the elements of my house, which I am currently trying to sell. And so I wanted to just give a prospective buyer, uh, you know, a feel for some of the stuff about the home, such as its renovation history, a little bit of detail about, you know, uh, details about the home itself, details about the surrounding neighborhood, as well as add some pictures, stuff that you would find on a typical real estate listing, but sort of uh, a, in, something that might serve as an enhancement to a typical real estate listing that you might normally look at. So anyway, uh, I used some very basic components. Uh, you know, I used Focus. I used Focus Cards to create this display that you see here. And I used um, another thing called Breadcrumbs for navigation, which we'll look at in a second. So basically, I used just a very few pieces to create a, a site that, that works and is beautiful. And I just want to share exactly what I did, like I said, so you can have an idea how to do this yourself. All right, so let's dive in. Uh, the first... Thing I had to consider was what was the content going to be on the site. I knew, you know, I had an idea of what I wanted, but how exactly am I going to present this? Well, I decided that I would have a page about the property itself and about the neighborhood. I talk about what stuff that's nearby. I uh, give some some specs on the home, that type of thing. Uh, nothing too serious here. And then. Um, Another page I wanted was going to be a deeper dive into the renovation history of the home. So I wanted I wanted space to talk about that, and I wanted to separate you know these things to make them more digestible, little chunks that you uh, you know keep you interested and keep you diving through the content in the site. And then third, I just wanted a little photo gallery to uh, you know if you want to see everything else about the home, see little details, you can do that there. So it's very simple, only three pages, but there's a fourth page. It's the home page itself that introduces you to these other items. Now, the whole reason I, I decided to make this video is because I guess some of the, the, the decisions I made here are a little bit counterintuitive or, or maybe uh, deceptively simple. We tend to overthink some of these little things that I chose to do here, and by me sharing this with you today, I hope to you know get you thinking in a new way, thinking, oh, actually, I can take a simpler approach that might be more effective. I don't have to follow this formula, this basic website formula that we sort of imagine that uh, we have to do these things on every website. It's just not true. So the first convention that I bucked here is this idea that a homepage needs a navigation menu. A navigation menu exists to help people browse a website, obviously. That's the, the fundamental purpose. But it doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? A website is actually a, kind of a dance between you, the website owner, and someone else, the website visitor. And your job as the website owner is to get the visitor engaged and to drive them through the parts of your site you want them to see. Now, a navigation menu by itself isn't particularly persuasive. What reason does a person have to read all your navigation links and really think about them and decide whether or not that's something that they want to do? Uh, the internet, less and less as we go on, as social media continues to rise, that type of calculation is happening less and less on the internet. People already know what they want, generally speaking, when they arrive on your website. By not by by giving them a different presentation than a, just a basic nav menu, you can provide extra reasons and more clear reasons to get them to drill down on the content on your site. And so here's a great example of that. Instead of using a typical nav menu, I put these cards in here, these focus cards, and you know it tells you it's got a nice big title, it's got a, a picture to go along with it, and it's got a, a brief description of what you can expect to see if you click on this link. This, this presentation format makes these links, th these could just as easily be links in the nav menu, I could just say about but that's not particularly descriptive. I could put a uh, renovation history as a link in the nav menu. That tells you a little bit more about what you could expect to find on that particular page. But again, it doesn't offer anything else that's compelling and that might give you a reason to click. And then also we've got, I could just have a link that's called photo gallery in a nav menu, but this 
tells you an ad, it gives you a verb, it says browse the photo gallery, it suggests that you do something. Verbs are very powerful, uh, persuasive words, and we don't generally have space in a navigation menu to include them, but this type of presentation, which is clearly different, uh, gives you the opportunity to put in some of these more persuasive elements to use powerful words to get people to do what you want on your website. This is very powerful stuff, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's circle back here. Another thing that's cool about this card presentation that beats just a basic nav menu link is these cards look like, like tangible things. They look like, you know, su substantive. They look like, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to be had here. There's something for me here. And that's super important. They also really uh, focus attention, they're called focus cards, but they really focus attention on these particular elements and they include some ninja stuff that works everywhere on the internet and has for years, it's going to work in the future, and that is these images and buttons, this opportunity presents stuff in this way. People see, if, if you just have any basic web page and people are scrolling through it, they're gonna see the following items. They're gonna read headlines, this is what people scan, images, if there were a caption on an image, people would scan that too. So captions would be another thing. Call out things like a button like this, and also elements that uh, depart from the basic design, so, such as uh, these cards stand out off of the rest of the page. These are attention-grabbing elements, and these are the kinds of things you want to use, uh, use in a conscious way to direct your visitor's attention around your site. So uh, this Focus Cards presentation, on the front page of the site, I think is a great replacement for a nav menu. It gives you a chance to put in action words. It gives you a chance to, uh, to add more persuasive text. I could have taken this a step further and used uh, some contextual bolding in here, make a couple of uh, keywords bold to further uh, help people scan and determine what they might want to click on next and drive them down further through the site. So let, let's go into one of the interior pages and see what I did as well. So that, that's really it for the home page. Instead of a nav menu, you know, there's not a lot on this site, but there is, you know, stuff that's going to make sense to a visitor. These cards cover all of that. And like I said, you know, the, the typical internet way of doing it would just be some links in the nav menu, and then you're left asking yourself, well, what kind of content would I want to put on the home page? Uh, generally speaking, whatever content you want to put on the home page would slow it down more too. So this is just like a, a fast, it is, it's clear, and it also doesn't give you any options here. You, all you get is this, explore an original mid-century modern, and you already kind of know what you're in for, and here you go, this is what you're focusing on, and there's nothing else. So this is going to drive attention exactly where I want it. And now we're gonna look at an interior page and see how I've constructed those. All right, so here on the interior page, we don't have a nav menu again. We're not gonna have one on the site, but we do have a little breadcrumb trail that will take you back home. Uh, the reason I like this at the top, and I'll show you what else I did at the bottom. At, at the top of the page, you might click and decide you don't wanna browse the content. So it's really nice to have a link here at the top where, you know, clicked here, then I click here. That's really quick navigation, doesn't require me to move my uh, cursor very far. Uh, this is good usability, it's a good practice there. Always think about where your users are, what clicks they might wanna make next, and make it easy for them to do the stuff they're likely to want to do. Okay, this page is actually unique from the rest of the pages on the site. If you'll notice here, uh, I've got everything centered, and these things are kind of, this is a center aligned thing. That's because I'm running this site in focus mode, which is uh, an option in the, uh, in the design options here, or in the content and display options. We can choose the content presentation mode, and we can choose focus mode, readability mode, or full width. I'm using focus mode. Most focus users use focus mode on their websites, we found out in the first uh, 20 months or so that focus has been available. But, so I'll, I'll quickly look at another page for you. This one is also centered. So in focus mode, this is how your pages are going to appear by default. But for this particular page, this other page, I wanted to have a little info box out to the side of the content to give you some quick hits, some details about the property. To do that effectively, with well, if, if I were to run this site in focus mode, or this page in focus mode rather, I wouldn't have enough room on either side of the content to really place, I could place a box similar to the one we saw on the other page, but there wouldn't be enough room to uh, present it in exactly this way. So I knew I wanted that extra space. So what I did was on this page, I selected the readability template, the readability page template, 
and then that is what is shown on this page. That gives me the, that readability pushes the text over to the left and gives you a room for stuff like this out to the side if that's what you want to do for your presentation. So that's cool. I included a uh, featured image here, real nice featured image for this page. Uh, you know, got my typical copy, you know, ba this basic stuff, there's nothing fancy going on here at all. This is all stuff I did inside the WordPress editor. This is an alert call out, basic, basic stuff that I've covered in my other videos. The only thing that's worth noting here, besides, you know, just basic copy, is I included this button at the bottom of the, uh, at the bottom of the content to take you back to the homepage because that's, that, you know, this is the same thing as up here but if you got all the way down through the content, this is the next thing you're likely to want to do. So this is just what you need when you need it. Okay, so this is good, good design practice. This is just uh, being cognizant of what your visitors are likely to want to do next. This is a great uh, practice for you to get into as you build your own sites and pages. So go back to the home page. We will look at this page. This is just the basic page template when you're running focus mode. Everything is centered. The column of text is centered. I've got an opportunity to, you know, talk about the uh, the addition or the addition and renovation history of the home. I've got an image here, it's extended. I put in a caption because like I said, captions are elements that users reliably scan even when they're not reading every word in your copy. I've got subheadlines, those catch attention as people scroll, same kind of thing. Uh, another extended image with a caption, of course. Same sort of thing, another subheadline, some more pictures, and then I've got a link to go back home at the bottom. Again, a link at the top, link at the bottom. You've got what you need when you need it. And the final page is just a photo gallery, nothing fancy to see here. And we've got a link back home at the bottom. And that is really it for the whole site. So I've used focus cards to create this home page, and I'll, I'll just show you in the content here. I, I This is a card group. I gave uh, my card, so you'll, if, if you're not familiar with focus cards, I'll encourage you to look at my other videos on focus cards where I do a deep dive about how all this stuff works. But basically I set up a group of three cards. I knew I would want to display them all on the homepage. I gave them all group name up front and I'm displaying them in a grid of three. That means three columns across and there it is. I set up each card in my, in my WordPress admin here. You set up the card, you give it a title, here's the copy, and then that is what is going to show out here, you know, right here in the output, title, copy, the image you add, all that stuff. So these are focus cards. I've deployed the special template on this page, nothing else special has been done, and I'm using breadcrumb trails instead of navigation, uh, typical, you know, navigation menus for uh, easy wayfinding throughout the site. So focus cards is an add-on component for focus, the breadcrumbs box is an add-on for focus. I'm using both of those here. I'm also using uh, the open graph box to create uh, these open graph uh, meta tags that you don't actually see when you view a web page, but these enhance the way uh, links to these pages on this site are going to appear in social media, it, like within a Twitter feed or a Facebook feed, all that stuff. Uh, I'm using that because I've got these great images that are really eye-catching. So if I share any links to any pages on the site on social media, I'm gonna get a big image, I'm gonna get a t nice title and a little description on there, and it's gonna look super appetizing and clickable for anyone who wants to view my content. So. We've got focus, we've got focus cards, we've got the breadcrumbs box, we've got the open graph box. That is a perfect uh, loadout for any new website where you want to generate a lot of attention and you really want to focus that attention precisely where you want. And by using these elements in combination, you can craft a delightful experience like this and do what I, you know, the main thesis, I guess, of this whole uh, presentation here is to uh, encourage you to Think about your visitors and to put exactly what visitors are going to want right where they're going to want it and when they're going to want it. Uh, that's a great usability uh, conceit to get into and it's going to help you get more the results that you want out of your website. And then of course, uh, you know, using focus cards, it's an easy way to look like a pro and set up this, you know, beautiful kind of presentation without, you know, you don't really need any technical expertise at all. You just set the stuff up. You, you say how you want it to output, like three across, two across, four across, whatever it is, and boom, you get this great output and then you, you too can craft a site just like this. Like there is no wizardry going on here. This is all basic stuff and that's really the big idea with focus and all these other components that I've got for you is that you can 
mix and match these things to do amazing things, but also to uh, kind of do that within this mindset of simplicity and being direct and only giving people what they need when they need it, okay? So dispel these notions that you may have about this is how a web page is supposed to be, this is how a website is supposed to be. Think about your, your content, exactly your, what your content is and what you want people to see, how you want them to see it, and the journey you wanna take your visitors through and craft your pages uh, in a way that respects that journey, in a way that enhances that journey. And don't worry about what website conventions are. The real convention you wanna work with is attention and driving that attention to the areas that's going to benefit your audience and ultimately benefit you through sales, opt-ins, or whatever it is, just attention, who knows? So you've got the goods here. Now you know the thinking behind this little micro site I built and uh, hopefully you go out and enhance your own sites in a similar way, all right? Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.